Like, I don't think this is an option anymore. I think I just have to go. Okay, we just re-accessed my port while we accessed twice because the first time it literally didn't work at all. So then we de-accessed, re-accessed, it's working fairly. I have IVIG today and thankfully it's with a pump and the pump can push the <laughs> liquid through my port because it's a powerful pump. But pushing my hand is so extremely difficult. It's like something is definitely not right. And it's kind of more confirmation that this port needs to go. The current plan, the two current options going on with my, like my CF team with my port is one option is that I go to interventional radiology and well, this is the last I heard and they would I don't know, slice me open here or something? I don't really know how they do this. And then, okay, wait, that's so confusing. So then I guess clear out this, the tubing from the port that goes like up into my heart area. I don't really know, but clear it out. And if that doesn't work, then remove the port and put a new port in. I have only been under anesthesia for ports, like port, placement when I was 15 or whatever. Port removal and new port placement. So this will, I don't know. I don't know. It makes me extremely nervous to be partially awake. I have friends who like prefer to be awake for it. I'm like, that is not me. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'm waiting to hear back from my CF team about what interventional radiology says. We will decide as we go, but for today, it's sort of working. So that's a huge win, I guess. No, it is, it is. I'm really thankful that it's working. Although in 25 minutes when my nurse gets here, it may not be working. That's just how this port has been acting. This port does not win any sort of awards. Yeah, bud. I say, can I eat it? I... Oh, oh. Nice. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Wow, I'm finishing IVIG. And yes, Peter made food. Looks amazing. Pork. What is it? Pork tenderloin? Zucchinis. Another month of IVIG is down and the port worked. So for right now it can stay, but I think it's time is coming. We're gonna run out and run an errand. I head to Lowe's, Peter has to exchange a lawnmower blade. So it's a good reason to get out of the house. I just haven't really been feeling like getting out and then yesterday we were out running an errand and Peter was like hey we're over by your favorite thrift stores you want to go and I was like no I, I yeah I really just I don't feel that bad I think I just feel just not great enough that I, I didn't really want to go but today I want to get out of the house and oops oh you reach in for this 
So we're gonna go run some errands. I need to pack breast milk and I think that's it. And then we'll go. Harry, what do you have to say about it? What is it? Really? Oh, you really just really want to go back outside? <laughs> he was already out like two or three times today. Yeah, babe. I'm sorry I can't help you with that right now. Hi, Bonzi. Did you guys have a good walk today? Are you having fun now that Elijah likes to go in the stroller and you go for long walks? It's so good. Yeah, it's so good. All my life you have been so I just realized I would actually rather go to the Dollar Tree than Lowe's. And so I was like, I think I'm thinking about going to Dollar Tree instead. And he was like, oh good, you can get us an eyeglass kit to fix the camera. And I was feeling so excited that there was a real reason for me to go to the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna just wear Elijah and go to the Dollar Tree and okay. have a ball. I did end up going to the thrift store because on the way after Lowe's and the Dollar Tree, which the Dollar Tree situation, when we left the house, I was like, there's a chance that my stomach could potentially explode. I mean, I did start antibiotics yesterday and sometimes IVIG makes my stomach go crazy. Not very often anymore, but anyway, so Elijah and I are in the Dollar Tree and I'm like, okay, this is fine. And then I was like, um, hmm, I'm gonna go to the bathroom now. And I walk over to the bathroom and it's locked. And it's like one of those things where it's like, oh, sorry, I hope like I didn't bother that person. I didn't open the door, but like it was, nobody answered and when I tried to open the door, it was locked. I, I, that's always like such an awkward feeling. Like, sorry, I didn't hear you in there. So then I come back a few minutes later, it's still locked. So I tried the other bathroom door, it was locked. I was like, all right, I'm totally fine. Then a few minutes later, I decided I should ask if there's a key at the front because sometimes, I don't know, back in the day they used to do that. They'd like put the key on a ruler or something entirely embarrassing to like carry through the whole store. And I mean, like, you know, stores back in my childhood would do that. I wonder what the biggest object a store has ever tied the key to. I'm thinking like a yardstick or something, I don't know, but I'd like to know the answer to that. And did the employees do it as a prank to anybody whose bowels were about to explode? Um, okay, so I go up to the front and I'm like, oh, is there a key for the bathroom? And she was like, no, you're gonna have to go across the street to Bojangles. I was like, okay. <laughs> I like, at that point I was like, I don't think this is an option anymore. I think I just have to go. So I went from like, oh, I'll be fine to like, I'm not fine. And me and Elijah are running across the four lane street or whatever. <laughs> so anyway, all is well. Everything ended up just fine. <laughs> we did get the eyeglasses kit. So it just comes with a tiny screwdriver, two different like Phillips head flathead, and then a bunch of tiny screws and a couple other eyeglass items. So for the camera, the screen hinge like needs a little screw in the bottom, so Peter will just figure out which screw and screw it in, and that will be that, a dollar fix. Plus, we can probably use this a couple of times. Did the battery just die? The camera just shut off. Anyway, everything worked out. And I hustled my way back to Dollar Tree so that I could get that little kit. And then I was like feeling good, like a new woman, and decided to go to the thrift store on the way home. So I went to this thrift store. It's just a few minutes away from our house. They always have good kids toys, including like wooden Melissa and Doug stuff. So I still need to take these price tags off and clean these toys, but I got this popper. 
I showed it to Elijah on the way home and he was mesmerized. So I, let's see, this one was $1.49. And toys at this age, they only use for such a short amount of time. This is a great way to use it for a little while and donate it back or give it to a friend. That's what I do anyway. Okay, a bunch of sticker residue. So I will be working on that, plus wiping the entire thing down. And then, yeah, this Melissa and Doug one for $1.99. It has crayon or marker or something, so I'm gonna see if a magic eraser will take that off. It does not bother me at all if it stays on there, but maybe it'll come off. I told my whole bowel situation story. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. I decided to go there. Full disclosure. Yeah. I did not give all details, but mm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. And then lastly, for $4.49, I got this pack of puzzles. Two wooden Melissa and Doug puzzles. Let's see if the other one is complete, okay? I could see that this one was complete. Yes! Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, these wooden puzzles have been great um, when my nephew visits or my friend's kids or whatever. Okay, so those two and then this cardboard one, which is fine. It's a little banged up, but it's fine. So, that was very fun for $8 and some change. And now I shall try to figure out how to get the sticker residue off and wipe them down. Oh, the, the pink sticker comes off better. Or maybe it's because it was on wood, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna try to go mow. Yes, did you tell them about this? No. Yeah. I walked across the street from the thrift store while Mary, well, Elijah and I were hanging out in the car. And he was, he was being funny. He was sitting in his car seat laughing, which you, you guys know, he hasn't been a huge fan of the car seat. So anytime he's like having content time in the car seat, I'm like, okay, let's just, let's, let's do this. Um, but, but then, um, he needed a diaper change, so got him out, and there was a gas station across the street, so we walked across the street. And, and did you put him in the stroller? Uh-uh. Oh. I just carried him. Got it. And, uh, we got a Slurpee, and, yeah, it was fun. Got it. Or, what does this place call it? A froster. Froster. Not a froster. Okay. And now it's... Washing time. All right, I'm gonna mow while he's sleeping. Wow, she went to sleep that quick. Oh yeah. All right, guys, that's a wrap on another day in the fry life. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, see you later. Taters. We'll see you next time. Look, they look like those little mints when you get at Nick's Airport End when you leave. Oh yeah. It's a Af bonesy. After dinner mints. Good night, buddy.